Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to our second webinar in our series of webinars covering the top five questions posed to our technical support staff. My name is Wayne Allen, and I'm the Regional Marketing Engineer for the Asia Pacific region for Fluke Networks. Today, I will be your host for this webinar. Today, we are going to look at loss over fiber links and how we calculate our loss budgets. Loss budgets are very critical. They determine whether, we, whether an application will work across our fiber link or not. Loss is one of those key performance parameters that we need to be aware of when talking about fiber optic links. Loss is a measure of how much light we are losing down a fiber optic link. As you can see here from the top graphic, we put an amount of light into a link and at the far end, we get a reduced amount of light out of the link. The difference between those light levels is the loss. Below that, I have a testing graphic. And if you refer to that graphic, you can see we insert a known level of light energy into the link from our source and measure at the far end, and this is important, using a calibrated power meter, how much energy gets to the far end of the link. The difference between the inserted power level and the received power level is the insertion loss or link loss. Importantly, we usually measure this loss in dB or decibels. Now, just a word of warning here. Don't confuse dB with dBm. dBm is a measure of power level reference to one milliwatt. So in the bottom graphic here, if we lose half of our inserted power, we have a three dB loss. If we only get a quarter of our inserted power at the far end, we have a 6 dB loss. And I've represented this here with the 0 dB pulse, the 3 dB pulse, and the 6 dB pulse. So what do we mean when we talk about link budgets when we're talking about fiber optics? In single terms, a link budget is the calculated maximum loss down a fiber optic link. Think of it as a worst case scenario. So when we calculate a budget, that's the maximum loss we are actually allowed. The link loss is calculated from the maximum allowed losses from the fiber optic cable itself the total number of mated connections. So that's mated connections, not individual connectors, and the total number of splices used. Both the ISO and the TIA standards organizations define loss budgets based on, of course, the fiber, the mated connectors, and the splice losses. Important to realize that we can have budgets for link limits and budgets for testing limits, and they actually can be different. So it's something to look out for. And when it comes to testing, for testing purposes, best practice is to use test reference cords with your optical loss test set or if you're using a light source power meter, test reference cords with your light source power meter combination. As I referred to earlier, budgets for testing can be tighter than link limits, especially when it comes to multi-mode fiber, and we'll look at that in a moment. From a standards point of view, both the ISO organization and the TIA organizations have the same test limits, the same numbers. But for single mode fiber, the TIA organization has slightly tighter budget limits. So down the bottom here, I have the basic equation we use to work out test limits or budgets for the link. 
Now, with the budget here, the loss budget equals the length of the fibre in kilometres times the loss per kilometre. And if you're talking multi-mode fibre, 3 dB per kilometre is a pretty common number. Then we add in the number of mated connectors times the loss per mated connector, and this can vary. And we'll talk about that in a later slide. And at the end, we add in the number of splices per fibre. And the maximum allowed loss for a splice is 0 0.3 dB. A word of warning here. Your calculated budget may not give you a guarantee that your application will work on a particular fibre optic link. You've worked out a worst case link budget, but you've also got to be aware of application budgets. And often application budgets are a lot smaller than calculated link budgets. I'll talk a little bit more about this topic in a future webinar. So for now, let's look at a worked example here for an OM5 cable. So for this exercise, we have four mated connectors. And I've got those marked on the graphic here, as you can see, labeled one through to four. Our total cable length end to end is 250 meters. Within the center link there, you can see two splices. And I've got a little table up there for multimode OM5 on fiber loss, connector loss, and, and splice losses. So let's go ahead and plug those values into our calculator, and that's that equation on the previous slide there. So let's have a look at that and how that works going forward. So we have 250 meters of fiber at 3 dB per kilometer. We have four mated connections at 0.75 dB per connection. And we have two splices at 0.3 of a dB. So that gives us a link budget here of 4.35 dB. You need to remember that for testing purposes, that number when we're talking about multimode is gonna be slightly lower. And we'll look at that on the next slide. So for testing purposes, we're going to be using TRCs or test reference cords. Now with multimode fiber, that means the first and last mated connectors have a lower limit. So our limit for testing purposes will be 0.5 of a dB rather than 0.75 of a dB. So let's look at that same OM5 example but let's rework the calculations and work out our budget for testing purposes. So if we plug the numbers into our calculator here and we do the sums, we come up with 3.95 dB. So our testing budget would be 3.95 dB. So it's lower, it's lower by 0.5 of a dB. So for testing, as long as your measured result is below or equal to 3.95 dB, we can consider the test a pass. Now, if you're using Fluke Network's certifier optical loss test set, it will automatically calculate the correct test budget for you. So I have a picture there across on the bottom right of of the user interface where we enter our connector count. And you can see there I've got four. Splice count, I have two. And our reference method is nearly always the one jumper reference method. So we'll automatically calculate what that budget will be based on the length we measure for the fiber. That just leaves one question. Is that pass good enough? Will the link work to carry our application? Well, we'll look at that in a further webinar in this series.
Well, that is all I have for you in today's webinar. I hope you found this information informative. If you should have any questions, just email the, those questions to us at the email address shown here. That's apacmarketing at flukenetworks.com. We've also created an ebook based on the material in these, this webinar series. So if you'd like a copy of the ebook, just go to the address shown along the bottom of the slide here, fill out the form, and you'll be able to download the book for yourself. So with that, I will wish you a good day and thank you for your attention.